So a fan of the show reached out to me, Charlie Hines, thank you very much, Charlie, and turned me on to a video, and really the subject of that video was quite interesting. In other words, what digital audio workstations, and this is a pretty exhaustive comparison and an accurately one done in my opinion, because you truly are comparing apples to apples, really compared all the major di digital audio workstations, how efficient they were on various um, revisions of the M series of processing within the um, Apple Silicon processing within the uh, the Mac computers. We got M1, that was the very first one. So you had M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, then you had the same thing for M2, and now the same thing for M3. Uh, some of the some of the particular models are still catching up to all of that, but regardless, that's where that's where it's at today. Wow. It's not using any of the efficiency cores. In the last two Mac review videos, I basically discovered that not all DAWs can fully utilize all the cores in an Apple Silicon chip. And so historically, when you've looked at, you know, buying a, a Mac computer or a Windows computer, you, you're really thinking and expecting that the fastest processor spec wise will ultimately <laughs> will ultimately be the best choice. Uh, and, and for a very long time, that's that's been true. However, as of today, now this is important, as of today, that may not be as true as it used to be in the past. Now, this is going to change. So anyway, what this guy did is he created, uh, you know, this session, all right, um, that had one particular plugin, an audio unit plugin, so he could do it across all digital audio workstations, and did a performance. So, or did a performance test. So you've got performance cores in new Apple Silicon Macs and efficiency cores. And so ultimately, what he did through his evaluation is quickly come to a very important point is that depending on which, di which digital audio workstation you're using today, that's going to have a huge impact on your, 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 your computer purchasing purchases today, okay? In other words, if you're going out and buy a computer, don't automatically assume that an M3 Pro or M3 Max or M whatever it is, M3 anything, don't assume that that's necessarily faster than an M1 Pro Max. Okay, uh, Pro Max, <laughs> whatever, you know what I was saying, okay. I, uh, so anyway, uh, so you would think that that would be the case. And so, so ultimately what he found was, if you're in Reaper, Reaper was the most efficient. Reaper used 100% of all performance cores and efficiency cores. Now that is pretty impressive. Considering it's kind of, from what I understand, pretty open source uh, digital audio workstations, the fact that they're mainly compatible right out of the gate as of today, taking advantage of all of those cores, um, that 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 really says a lot about Reaper. So those of you Reaper users out there know that you're using an incredibly efficient digital audio workstation. And I know most of you out there that use it absolutely love it. Well, next up, in a very close second, okay, was Cubase 13. And so, whether it's Cubase or Nuendo, I have Nuendo here, but uh, it also took advantage of all the performance cores and all of the efficiency cores. So you were, you were able to get the maximum performance out of that M3-based um, Mac computer, okay? And so, but where it started to change after that is practically all the others, okay, could only really take advantage of the efficiency cores, not their performance cores. So you're only using half of the CPU of that computer that you just bought and spent probably a good thousand dollars more than you would had you bought an M1 or even an M2. Um, so there's a case out there right now to be had because Pro Tools was terrible. Logic, of all things, I would have never expected Logic to not be able to take advantage of all the cores. That's shocking to me, considering Apple freaking makes it, okay? So I didn't, get, I don't get that. And sometimes, somehow, that seems like it's, I don't know, I hate to say it, but it almost seems like it's on purpose because that's ridiculous. Apple can't even, you know, fully utilize its own processing within its computer, within its, when it controls everything and it controls the application as well as, as the performance of the computer. That's kind of hard to, hard to swallow. I mean, this guy even did it down to um, FL Studio. You know, and so it, it, it also couldn't really perform or keep up. So you've got Logic, Pro Tools, um, Presonus Studio One, which I really love, Studio One. All of those, basically all the major DAWs out there uh, could only take advantage of the efficiency cores and not the performance cores with the exception of Cubase and Reaper. So if you're in Cubase and Reaper, buy that most uh, most powerful computer that you can buy. That'll be a good investment. If you're not, you really should rethink either holding off and wait till some of these other um, developers catch up. Because th keep in mind, this is as of today. Who knows how long this will go on for? I can guarantee you with Pro Tools, you're probably talking a couple of years away because they're always so far behind everybody else. And 
and keeping that uh, digital audio workstation up to date. But the others will probably start doing efficiency things to, to really learn how to re use all the processing power of their computer. So a year from now, we may be in a completely different boat. So you have to make the decision. Does it make more sense to spend more money now to get a more powerful computer now, hoping that my the, my main application that I'm using, which is my you know my DAW, um, do, does it make sense and allow that to give it time to grow into that processor to be able to take advantage of all those cores? You know, and if so, how long are you going to be waiting? That's a question. That's a hard question to answer. Should you go for that now, or should you save some money and buy a used M1 Pro as an example, which is what I use in my studio. I have an M1 Pro in my studio, and I have never come close to maxing that thing out ever, not one single time. Now, keep in mind, I don't do a lot of virtual instruments and things like that, so that, that I'm sure that's probably part of it, um, but, but I've, I've never had a problem. And so I don't have any desire to upgrade now because a computer for me typically lasts me eight to 10 years before I upgrade. And so uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see how that cycle works with Apple Silicon and the continued development of it. Uh, it very well may be more compelling to sell it and get, a, get another one. But as of today, here's what I would do. If I wasn't using Reaper or Cubase or no window, if I wasn't using any of those, I would not buy an M3 Mac right now. I just, I personally wouldn't. Um, I would rather save that money now, set that off in the bank and the difference between that and M3, whatever version you're going to, whether it's M3, M3 Pro or M3 Max, doesn't really matter. Whatever you're going for, right? Set that money aside and leave it in the bank. And that way, when when the processing does catch up and all those things, and let's assume it does, it very well may not for quite some time, but at least you you know that you're being able to take advantage of um, uh, the, the processing power on that computer. So I would probably look, honestly, for an M1 or an M2, probably an M1, M1 Max or M1 Pro. Um, there's some questions whether how much efficiency it can take over the Max versus the Pro. A lot of tests out there, including some as I did, that uh, said the Pro was really, when it comes to digital audio workstations, just as good as a Max. But that was at that time. I don't know where it is today because it's been a while since I've done that. So anyway, I've put a link because I think every one of you should watch this video if you're thinking about buying a computer. I put a link to the video down below. And so please go down and check that out and watch that video from beginning to end. It, yes, it's one of those videos you got to watch from beginning to end can't just click off after two minutes when you've heard what you wanted to hear or you get turned off by what you heard. Listen to the argument. Listen to the debate. Listen to the discussion. I put a lot of work into this and I think it's worthy of your consideration. So go down and check that out. As well as that link down below, keep in mind, uh, one of the ways I make money on this particular channel, because you don't make a lot of money with views, is I have a relationship with Sweetwater where anything you buy from Sweetwater, if you use one of my, what they call affiliate links, if you use one of those and they're down in the description below, then I get a tiny, tiny little percentage percentage of that sale. So if you're going to buy something and you're going to buy it from Sweetwater, all I do is ask you to please uh, to use the link down below. If you can see down below the very first link uh, that you're seeing, ultimately um, that, that will take you to anything you want to buy. Anything you want to buy. All the other links below that are gear that I've reviewed and I've got positive results on and they're recommended by me. i got to continue to expand that. I'll get to that one day, but ultimately you've got those down there if you want to get something specific. But please use that link. It helps me out. It helps me grow the channel. It helps me keep making these videos for you guys. So do me a favor. Also leave me some comments down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your perspective is. Go back and watch that video and then come back here and leave some comments and tell me what you walked away, what, what perception you have after watching that video. Because I think it's an important discussion. It's really important because a computer is a really important aspect of your of your home recording setup. And you want to make sure that you're not overspending and you're not underspending, that you're getting something that will grow with you and be with you for a very long time. But you've got to consider all these things as far as 